All right, we've been talking a lot about project management and we are sort of overlapping themes with operations management at this point as we start to look at uh, various statistical tools for monitoring the effectiveness of different interventions that we are doing within either a project or within standard operations. So today we're going to talk about the Deming cycle and this is likely going to be sort of intuitive, but at the same time, it's really, really important to be deliberate about the systematic approach that you do in your work so that you can be more successful with it. So at the end of this video, you will be able to define the Deming cycle as the plan, do, study, act cycle. Um, you may have heard of it as the plan, do, check, act cycle, and that's a quite common terminology. However, W. Edwards Deming actually called it the plan to study act cycle, and I stick with that terminology, even though the two are quite frequently used interchangeably. We'll uh, briefly describe the parallels between the Deming cycle, Demaic, and the scientific method. And the scientific method, you may be saying, wait a second, but a lot of this fundamental of setting a hypothesis, setting a methodology, doing an experiment and coming to conclusions actually has a lot of parallels. And we'll appreciate the importance of continuous improvement as part of innovation systems, in particular with respect to food processing. So W. Edwards Deming, a, I've had a few different slide decks where we've talked about him. He was a statistician. He was originally from Sioux City, Iowa, and he was part of the MacArthur um, group that was over in post-war Japan looking at how to rebuild the infrastructure and the manufacturing sector that was destroyed in the World War II conflict. Uh, General MacArthur complained to Deming and his team that he couldn't make a phone call because the infrastructure for making telephone calls was completely collapsed. And so uh, Deming went over and applied a lot of the statistical process control knowledge that he uh, gained from um, various work that he did at the U.S. Census Department, along with um, other statisticians such as Schuhart, and we will have some uh, work on Schuhart's theorems as well. But uh, more or less, he was really focused on helping the Japanese economy rebuild, and he felt that the most important thing was to create systems within that manufacturing process. And he said, as much as it's about the manufacturing tooling and equipment and machines, you need to focus on the human dynamics and the people behind those systems to make sure that those systems can run efficiently and effectively. So one of his quotes, you know my, my thought process here, you've seen these before. Um, here's a quote from W. Edward Stemming. If you can't describe what you are doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. I love the pragmatism of many of these um, thought leaders that came from Iowa. I, as you know, I studied in Iowa as well, and I feel a kinship to many of these Iowa people, such as uh, W. Edward Stemming and um, uh, Dr. Norman Borlaug, many of those uh, generational scientists who had really broad impact on the world have made a big impact on my own personal career. So make sure you know what you're doing and be able to describe why you're doing it and what you're doing because otherwise you're likely wasting time. <laughs> Put it nicely. So in simple terms, the Deming cycle is the plan, do, study, act cycle. And let's just parse it out um, at a more detailed level. The plan step is where you're thinking about evaluating new need, whether that is new products, new processes, improvements of processes, fixing problems, responding to regulations. Main thing is you've got some pain point that has created a need and therefore you need to set some sort of plan. We have done a whole lot of different slide decks um, earlier on setting those plans. So I'm not gonna rehash how do you set a plan, but the main thing is you need to set that plan and codify it, detail what you want to do and what you want to measure. What are the parallels here? Well, 
within the scientific method, this is where you're really setting that hypothesis and setting that methodology in place. And so there are parallels with the scientific method. And those of you who've taken my chemistry classes know that we spend a lot of time thinking about the scientific method and experimental design. That whole experimental design comes to play here. But when you're in industrial systems, you may not be thinking of it as, a, as an experiment like you would be in a chemistry class, per se. Then we're jumping out to the do part. This is where we're starting to do stuff. You're out there doing your experimental work. You're doing your data collection. In other cases, it could be out there doing observational studies. I remember when I worked in the inspection agency in Canada, oftentimes I would see people who were Six Sigma practitioners in manufacturing plants, and it looked really quite beguiling because quite often they would be on a on a stool or just standing there for hours on end with a clipboard and they would just be standing there and employees and other people would be saying, what a waste of time. The person is just standing there, but they need to do those observational studies and collect the data. And in many cases, it's just standing there and watching the different behaviors, whether they are occurring or not occurring, to be able to define what is the next step, which is to do the data analysis and make recommendations. So yeah, I sort of gave away the next step. That is where we're doing the study part. As I mentioned before, in the plan, do, study, act, uh, it's often, a study is often replaced with the word check. And those two are used interchangeably. Again, Deming used the word study, so I'm going to use the word study. That's where you're starting to apply different statistical um, methodologies, different data analysis methodologies to be able to find the trends and pattern and find out what that opportunity is in the data. You need to take the time with that data and analyze it. As I mentioned before, our next step in this course is going to be looking at the seven tools of quality. And those are um, quite globally recognized tools for doing data collection with respect to manufacturing systems. But it really up to you back at that study, or not study phase, at the plan stage, to really think about the system that you're working in and what is the actual quality measurement that you need to be doing. So plan and study very much are interconnected because it's at that planning stage where you're setting your hypothesis that you need to anticipate what is it that you're going to be studying so that you know that you've designed and collected the right data. So you've analyzed it and at this point you're going to do the act piece of the puzzle. That's where you're starting to make recommendations or justify what your next cycle of activity is. In some cases it's going to be making those improvements and corrections in the system. Um, could be things like doing preventative maintenance or getting things repaired. And in other cases, if you're doing product development, it could be the it could be the end. And it, typically this is a very cyclical thing and it keeps repeating and repeating. But at this point, this is where you could be putting out your stuff into the world, whether that's commercialization or publication, but getting your recommendations out there so that people can make sense of it and do stuff with it. And in often cases, this cycle then just continues over and over and over again. You remember from Goldratt's theory, you find the constraint, you fix the constraint, and then you find the next new constraint. You keep going through this cycle of continuous improvement or continuous activity to find the next opportunity and the next improvement that can be made. Now, something that I find when working with students is that they're so, so tempted to make these enormously huge studies, these enormously complicated um, approaches, and they spend a million years planning, and then a million years doing, and then a million years doing data analysis. And I'm exaggerating, obviously, because they'd be dead in a million years. But And the study gets too big and unwieldy, and it gets overcomplicated. And therefore, the inertia becomes the doing of this type of study rather than what the typical approach should be is instead to have smaller cycles. And these are much more manageable. And to parse those cycles out into bite-sized pieces 
and cycle through them quickly to get that feedback. Um, those of you who have been following along, you have likely seen the uh, project management implementation slide deck, and we've talked about Kanban and um, Scrum Agile methodology in project management. Well, in there, they are really focused on really short feedback cycles, really short cycles of a plan, do, study, act to get feedback and move quickly and progress through the different tasks or the different um, learning outcomes that need to be accomplished to get from the idea to the actual product. So when I'm working with um, students, I often say, do focus on bite-size um, PDSA cycles. If you are in the innovation class, for example, you may be noticing a pattern here. Every time you are in that practical lab in the third year, you, in essence, on that given day, are doing a PDSA cycle when you are doing your product development. You are planning out what you want to do. You are going ahead and doing it in your in your lab period. You get some feedback. Studying could be statistical analysis. It could just be feedback from other stakeholders in your group. It could be that product owner who's giving feedback. And then you're making another action plan. So you have your plan for the following week. Those cycles to mastery or the cycles to completion we have been modeling for you all along. Now you know deliberately why we are doing this and you can name it and label it and own it. So every single week you are doing a PDSA cycle. You are doing that hypothesis testing. And again, we have reinforced that experimental design piece where you are thinking about your hypothesis, you're building an appropriate positive and negative controls and defining your treatments. And that's all part of the planning process in a PDSA cycle. And now we are starting to overlay more complexity into those PDSA cycles so that you understand why you're doing it. And you can take those tools into more of a management and leadership type role. We will be starting with the tools for the seven tools for quality measure, and that will be coming up next in the next round of videos. But you now know the Deming cycle and you can own it. Anyways, that's it for this short and sweet little um, slide deck. You always know I love your questions and I love to hear from you and get feedback on <laughs> why do I ask for feedback? Hey, it's my own plan, do, study, act cycle. I have noticed a, a, a really great evolution in the quality of my own videos. Why? Because you give me great feedback and I always enjoy hearing from you to find out ways that I can be delivering um, more learning content so that you can be more successful as a food scientist in your career. All right, take care and we'll talk to you soon.